Illustrator provides great typographic controls that give you the utmost in possibilities when creating artwork. Illustrator allows you to create two different forms of type, point type and area type. Understanding the difference between the two will help you to use the right one for the right application. Let's take a look. I'm beginning this video with the type.ai file already open on my computer. And to create some point type on my artboard, I'm going to come over here and select the type tool and I'm just going to click once on my artboard and now I can start typing some text. I'm just going to type cliffhanger sports although you could type really whatever you want to in this example. Now the thing I like to point out with point type is that it really wants to just create one long line of type. If I continue typing just some gibberish here you can see that Essentially, Illustrator wants to create one long line of type. Now I'm just going to delete that text. You can, of course, press the return key to force a line break. However, for the most part, area type wants to be held as a single line. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come down here. You see I have some text out here on the artboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this text and I'm going to copy it using Command C on Mac or Control C on Windows. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to my selection tool, click on my artboard to make sure that nothing is selected, and now I'll grab the type tool again. This time, to create area type, I am going to, instead of just clicking, click and drag to draw a frame on my artboard. Now if I use the keyboard shortcut Command V on Mac or Control V on Windows, it's going to paste that text into that frame. Now the difference here as far as how we created this type is that with area type we just clicked once on the artboard and began typing. For area type you click and drag to define an area for your type and the type will then flow within that area. Now let's take a look at the behavior of these two different forms of type. I'm going to switch to my selection tool and I'm going to come up here to the cliffhanger sports text or the point type and a couple of behaviors you're going to notice is that if I grab one of these handles I am going to stretch that text. Let's undo that using command Z or control Z on your keyboard. Same thing with moving the type horizontally. If I grab this side handle I'm just going to stretch that type out. And of course there may be times when you do want to do that, but generally you don't want to distort your type in that manner. So let's go ahead and undo that as well. If you want to increase or decrease the point size of your type visually, you can do so by dragging a corner handle out, but holding down the shift key on your keyboard at the same time. That way it'll proportionately scale your text. Now, the other thing about point type is that you can grab one of these handles. So I'm going to grab the top handle here and this will allow me to actually flip this text upside down if I want to. Let's go ahead and undo that. So you can see that point type does provide a wide variety of creative possibilities when you're using your text. Now when you're working with area type however, I'm just going to click on that with my selection tool, you'll notice quite a bit of a difference. So if I grab the side handle here, you're going to notice that as I change the width of this frame, the type, instead of being distorted, is going to reflow within that area. You can do the same thing here. You'll notice that sometimes when working with area type, you may get this appearance here. And this little plus sign in the lower right corner indicates overset text, or more text than is going to fit within your frame. Now, to fix this problem, I can open this up. That way we no longer have overset text. The other thing we can do with area type, I'm going to go ahead and pull this up to force overset text. When you're working with area type, you'll notice that you have two boxes. You have an import and an outport. I'm going to zoom in so we can see that a little bit better. You'll notice here is your import and here is your outport. And these ports are used to flow text from one area type object to another. The way that you do that is if you click on the plus sign, which is the overset text indicator, 
you can now move over here and click and drag to draw another frame and you'll notice that the text is now flowing from this frame to this frame. I'm going to go ahead and press Command-0 on Mac or Control-0 on Windows. And you'll also notice that these are now connected. So if I were to open up this frame, it's going to allow more text in the first frame. And in the second frame, you're going to notice that the text is going to flow back into that first frame. So these are always connected. So you can see now how point type and area type behave quite differently from each other. Each one has its application in Illustrator, and understanding how each one works will make you a more efficient Illustrator user.